With the Halloween season swiftly upon us, it's the beginning of October, I have been inspired to do some more Halloween-y things because, I don't know, it's fun to dress up like a princess. So I'm going back to my Disney princess roots and we are doing an Aurora dress today. You bird, you're so cute, I love you. I love you. I've never made a blue version of this dress. I've made a pink one and I've made a color changing one and today we're gonna make a blue one. If you've been subscribed for a while, you might remember that like well over a year ago, might've been two years ago, I had dyed 12 yards of chiffon to make a blue Aurora dress. And it ended up kind of like a purpley kind of color, but I wanted it to be periwinkle blue anyway. And I'm going to use that fabric for this project because I've been holding on to it and I haven't done a Disney princess dress in so long. So today is the day. My friend Heloise is a pattern maker and I'm using his bodice pattern today. Will you please stop? Huber is being so annoying. The Guinevere bodice pattern. Uh, we're using this as the base for this dress. We're gonna start out and cut the fabric and have fun. The bodice of this, I'm actually gonna be using some velvet I have. I found a scrap of it and it was the perfect shade and I decided I wanted to use it, but I didn't have any more. And so I was going to go out to the store to see if I could possibly find more of it. And then I remembered that I used it for an Anastasia dress that really didn't turn out exactly how I liked it anyway. And so I decided, I was like, oh, I should just use this dress. So I am doing something sad and I'm gonna take it apart and use it for fabric, but it's whatever. I don't, I'm not that sad about it. And I think velvet is always a nightmare to work with. And I have an idea. <laughs> you were, you were just so, such a light in my life. I have an idea. I'm gonna use stabilizer on it because I think it might help me out a little bit more. And I'm going to cut these pieces out with the stabilizer first. And then I think I'm going to iron them on to just the velvet and then cut it out that way. I think it'd be easier than cutting out the velvet pieces because velvet curls and velvet does all these things that are just not fun. And so I'm figuring that it might be easier to do this and it might fail miserably. I don't really know. So I am going to finish cutting out the pieces with this interfacing stabilizer and I will get back to you when they're all cut out. The scrap piece I had actually got all of them except the this side piece. And so I'll cut these out and then I'll cut apart the dress, but it's looking really good. You guys, it's looking so good. This is the first time I've worked with velvet and not wanted to off myself. The interfacing is helping out a lot. So I'm going to keep on working on this and sew up the rest of it. I'm so excited about how it's looking. Before I continue, I want to take a moment to tell you about today's sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN which stands for Virtual Private Network and it will keep you safe and secure while you're online by covering up what you do. A VPN lets you travel the world with just one click, not physically, of course. For example, if you're in the United States like me, but you want to access the Netflix, that they have in other countries and get more options. You can use Surfshark to change your location online and then you have it access to a whole new digital library. When I was in Greece two years ago, actually, I found out that they had Keeping Up With The Kardashians on their version of Netflix and I was so angry that we didn't have it here, but now I can use theirs. You can also use Surfshark to unblock content on YouTube or other websites that might not be available to you because of where you are. Aside from unblocking content, Surfshark will also help you stay safe online. If you use public Wi-Fi often, Surfshark will encrypt your online data. Are you sending and receiving files? If so, the VPN will make sure your location and download history are private by encrypting all online traffic. Surfshark has over 3,200 servers in 100 countries, so you'll have something that fits your needs from anywhere around the world. Plus, one subscription is good for an unlimited amount of devices. Get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deals slash alexandralouise and use promo code alexandralouise for a special Black Friday offer of five extra months free with the Surfshark One package. Definitely go check this offer out. And with that said, it's time to get back to the dress. So I was 
rethinking what I want to do for the sleeve because this is the hardest Disney princess dress to make in my personal opinion. I've got a really great start on the bodice. This neck piece is not the official one. I was just kind of playing around. So it was a scrap one I made, uh, but the velvet itself is turning out fantastically. And now it's time where I need to make a decision about the sleeves. So I think what I want to do is I am going to use the sleeve pattern. I wasn't going to, but I think I am. I think it will look good because this is how it is. Um, so we'll do the sleeve. And then the collar is with this. Since I want the sleeves to have a flounce, I shortened the sleeve pattern to be below the elbow. And I'm going to cut a circle, basically a circle skirt, but for the arm out of this. And it's gonna kind of go out so that it's longer in the back and shorter in the front. I'm not saying this to sound cocky or annoying. I'm saying it because I'm truly flabbergasted. But every time I sew something, I'm amazed at how I do it because I I wing everything I do. I never really have a plan. I just hope for the best and it always turns out. And this, oh my gosh, look at how pretty this is. Oh my goodness, look at how pretty it is. And it fits pretty good too. I have to do the other sleeve. I'm pretty sure this pattern does not come with like that weird thing that's on the bottom of this bodice. So I usually just make it myself because it's my third one. Um, I kind of just freehand it. They're just randomly shaped triangles. So like this is the center one and it's gonna go right there. And then these ones will go right there. And for this, I used this silk that I had lying around and then I layered it with this lace and I think that's really pretty and then I found this and I was thinking I could cut out appliques with it but I might dye it blue first to make it match. I think that might be kind of cool but for now I'm going to sew these on to this. Today I'm working on the collar and I think it's turning out so beautiful. I have one side done. I tried something different that I've never done before. I just made a witch costume for Halloween and the hat uses buckram to interface it and i have never used it before this is what it looks like it's just like a stiff interfacing and so i decided why not use that in the collar so i did it's in here and then there's a lining and then the outer layer and then the lace so it's sturdy it'll look better once it's attached trust me so that's what we're working with. I need to make the other one and then I can sew it onto the bodice. We are at the point in the project where we've got a lot of hand sewing to do. I finished off this collar yesterday and I have it pinned on. It's pretty beautiful and I'm just having faith that it will fit me. I don't know if it will. That's the reason that I, I mean, this is my favorite princess dress. But the reason I don't like it is because you literally have no movement. Um, and I, you'd have more movement if the collar, if you raised it up and it started more on top of your shoulder. But I don't like how that looks. It always just looks really costumey. I like it when it hits lower and like your collarbone shows off. I just prefer that. And so I'll sacrifice not being able to move my arms at all to be able to do that. So now basically I get to spend my whole day hand sewing this on. And then once it's all hand sewn on, we get to start hand sewing pearls and stuff on. Um, so it's all hand sewing but it's worth it. I'll just listen to some music and do my thing. Okay, when I dyed this, I did not have the bodice with me, so I kind of guessed the color, and I literally got it perfectly. So look at this, you guys. This is the bodice, and then I did two shades. I did a darker shade, and I did like a lighter shade. The lighter shade matches perfectly with the light satin, and then I can throw the darker ones in there too for a bit of contrast. So I'm right now I'm like cutting all of these out because I got this sewn on. I ended up not hand sewing. I started just doing little tacks with the sewing machine because it was just taking too long. My fingers hurt. My favorite thing is always coming in the next day because I kind of forget what it looks like and then I get to see it like for the first time. So I'm loving it, but I think I could even add more. It's just so annoying cutting those out. I hate doing it. Oh no. I didn't put the lid back on yesterday. Oh no. That's a bummer. Now I need to buy more. I need to add them to this back thing. And then now that this collar is added, I can add the grommet on here so that it will lace up. And we're just gonna keep plugging away. The bodice is, I would say 98% done. The flowers are all on here. I would like to cut and add more flowers to the sleeves. And then I also had dyed some pearls that I'm going to hand sew on here. But I'm tired of hand sewing and gluing. So we're gonna start on the skirt. Like I said, a couple years ago, I had dyed 12 yards of chiffon for this thing in, in with the intent of doing a double circle skirt. And I think I probably used like a yard of it on the sleeves. 
So I'm gonna hope I still have enough for a double circle skirt. It's a lot of fabric and I'm actually kind of dreading it because it's chiffon. I'm gonna try cutting out four half circle skirts. <laughs> Hopefully we have enough. And if I can get this sewn together, it can lay down during like overnight. Like I'll let it stretch overnight so that we can hem it. I've had this fabric sitting here for like three days now stretching. So I think it's time to take it off. And before I hem it, we're gonna make the waistband because oops, that will make it a little simpler to hem. I think if it's on an actual waistband, I just realized I still need to get something to put under this fabric wise. And I don't know what I'm gonna do, but that's not today's problem. That's a different day's problem. <laughs> I'm hemming this skirt right now. The chiffon has stretched a lot and I decided I'm not gonna be too particular. It doesn't have to be 100% even because since it is a double circle skirt, it's going to like be on top of each other a lot if that makes sense. So if it's not a perfect hem, I'm okay with it. In case you're wondering, hemming two circle skirts, hemming a double circle skirt of chiffon is not for the faint of heart. I have been sitting here for so long that I just listened to, <laughs> I just finished listening to the entirety of Mozart's Requiem, which has a runtime of about an hour. It just ended like two seconds ago before I started filming. Mozart's Requiem just ended and I'll show you how much I have left of the skirt. I'm down to the last two inches of hemming this double circle skirt of chiffon. I listened to Mozart's Requiem and I still didn't finish it. I hate it, I've been sitting here for an hour. Anyway, I'm gonna finish up the last two inches and then the skirt is actually done. Okay, finished. Mm. 